Our next guest is Big Game Jermaine. We talked to him about his interest outside of basketball, like his drawing, his growth over these past couple years here at Villanova, and how he leads as a junior on this year's team. Welcome back to Stay Tuned with D-Ray. We're here with Jermaine Samuels. Man, what's going on with you? It's good, D-Ray. <laughs> I'm up here sounding like Terrence Howard. All right, so Jermaine, I got to ask you. I wanted to ask Dad, I wanted to ask Colin. I forgot, quite honestly. Um, so I'm going to ask you, what did it feel like after you guys won in 2018 to have to come back the next year? Because we dealt with that in 17, mm -hmm. and it's a different season. What was the biggest difference you saw between those two years? Uh... The biggest difference I would say is, you know, the chemistry part. Because mm -hmm. those dudes, like with Phil and E, being with Mikhail, Jalen, um, Dante so long, yeah. you know, it, it takes an effect on the team, especially when they've been playing two to three years together. And then yeah. you throw us in, in the mix, me, Colin, mm -hmm. Demir, Joe. Yeah. And it's just like a completely different feel. And it's like you have to re hit the reset button. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like, like, like you said, it was just two entirely different years. But... You know, it all worked out in the end, mm -hmm. both this, both seasons. Yeah, it did, it did, it did. But last year, what was the difference for you? Biggest difference, shall I say, for you? Like, because your freshman year, you played battle to hand injury, you know, yeah. so you were you were in and out. But your sophomore year, you expected to step up big time, and you did. So what was the biggest difference for you? Um, learning, honestly, how to grow up, you mm -hmm. know. Samuels. Oh! Jermaine Samuels! This is a, a whole entire responsibility when it comes to being a big time basketball player. Yes. Yeah. Coach Coach yeah. says. Yes. So like I had to grow up and learn learn responsibility, be accountable mm -hmm. and be reliable and yeah. consistent. Mm -hmm. So those are the things, you know, I had to change up and it took me a while yeah. to understand that. No, it's it's, it's, it's it's understandable. I mean that's that's part of the journey. You know what I mean? Like being a young player, like I said, you, you got not thrown into a role. It was what it was. But yeah. At the end of the day, it's like your freshman year, you know, it's like, all right, you know, you'll get in sometimes, you'll play, you'll get your spot minutes. And then your sophomore year, it's like, you know, you're starting, you know, like you're really in the mix. But one game in particular, <laughs> you got down and busy. Temple. Yeah. At the pavilion, the new fin. Yeah. You go off for 27 points. Could have had 30 some of your major free throws. What happened? that game um honestly it wasn't temple it was marquette it was, it was marquette, marquette. It, was it was marquette thank y'all for back there whispering <laughs> i wanted it to be temple you had a good game during temple but it was marquette i ain't gonna let this out go ahead <laughs> go ahead uh, i'm human the marquette game honestly um we just wanted to go out there and, and, and battle as a team you yeah. um, we were seeing that kale was there mm -hmm. um and coaches just like be aggressive all my teammates trusted me we've been working on it yeah you know behind the scenes mm -hmm. like like we do mm -hmm. and I think I remember he was like if he's not gonna guard you kill him yes. like and that was after that you know my guys just kept encouraging me and uh -huh. I just rolled with it so I, I know what it's like to be you know in a game it's like you're in the zone mm -hmm. and then you look up and be like oh at what point did you look up because 27 like at some point you had to look up and be like yo I'm doing my thing uh, I think it was I think I, I did a shot fake and I laid the ball up. It was uh -huh. like before halftime. Okay. And like they called a timeout. Yeah. And right above the the um the our bench is the scoreboard. Yeah. So I look up and I'm trying to see what time is left. And yeah. I was like, oh, oh, whoa, whoa. Like uh -huh. uh, okay, all right. I just tried not to pay attention to it. Okay. And you know, that that was that was my initial reaction. Okay, okay. I don't know why I just said that, like OJ the Juice Man. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> all right, so this summer, yeah. you also played with the USA team. Yeah. What was that experience like? Uh, entirely different than I expected. I, I played in Germany uh, for uh, just like, I think me and Dylan mm -hmm. went to Germany. Um, the Golden Sports Academy. Academy. Yeah, the Sports me Academy. Me and Chris went to that a few years back. It's a yeah. good time. A good yeah, time. it is a good time. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was entirely different because yeah. we go out to the Pan Am games and we're playing men. Yeah. Like these, these dudes make money overseas yes. and these dudes are professionals mm -hmm. all over the world. And it was an entirely different ball game from ball movement to mm -hmm. physicality yeah. to the way they run sets mm -hmm. and officiating, everything. And honestly, I was just grateful for the opportunity to even put the jersey on my chest. It mm -hmm. didn't matter. Yeah. And um, 
and it was a unique experience also playing with the Big East guys. You, uh -huh. you, you scrap and claw against these guys yeah. and you never really get a chance to know them. And it was, that was probably one of the most interesting things about it. Okay, all right. So when you get back this summer, what'd you jump into? Cause you got back, summer session was over. Yeah. You know, you guys missed summer jam. And then you came back and went right home. Yeah. So what was your August like? Cause many people don't know in college, if you're there for the summer sessions, you really get May and August yeah. away from school. Yeah. It's two months out of the year. Like basketball is a full time sport. So yeah. what'd you use your August to do? Uh, I chose for like maybe four days. Mm -hmm. I, I, I couldn't do it. Like I needed yeah. to get in the gym. And then I had my little brother with me, mm -hmm. uh, Justice. Yeah. Uh, he's 11. So he's like, he's learning how to play the game. So yeah. I just, just take him with me. Every time I went to the gym, we work on ball handling and shooting. Uh -huh. He's a lefty, so it was just it was oh one of those God, bond, my God, my God. one of those bonding experiences. You know, it was mm -hmm. one of the rare opportunities as well. So I took okay. advantage of it. Uh, and what's something you want to teach him that you've learned over these past couple of years? Um, the game. You know, honestly. Thank you for that answer. Something specific, man. Like, like, like one thing. Um, if you was like, listen, I need my brother to know this coming up. This one piece of advice will help him with so many things. What would it be? I'd probably say, man, that's a hard question. I guess the attention to detail. Okay. Yeah. I mean, me growing up, I just went to the basket. And uh huh. This, this, and that, but I didn't understand how to play the game. Yeah. And I, I want him to learn how to play the game and understand the game. Okay, okay. Just real quick, and this wasn't even, but you made me realize that. Do you feel like AU basketball prepares players for college? No, not okay. necessarily. Okay. Uh, I would say because it's an entirely like different game as far as how hard you have to play. And yeah. AU is just up and down, but uh -huh. in college, like everything counts. Like. Yeah. These games go down to the wire. Okay. Uh, I guess I just had to ask real quick. Yeah. That's a question that a lot of people like. They don't understand it. There's yeah. a like just like you said, going over to Europe. It's a completely different game. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna talk about them sneaks yeah. and the rest of your sneak collection <laughs> after this. That shirt that I'm very happy about, <laughs> and a few other things right after this break. We'll be right back. With, stay tuned with D-Ray here with Jermaine Samuels, man. <laughs> that was a hard question. Huh? back here on Stay Tuned with D-Ray with Jermaine Samuels. And like I said, man, we got to talk about them shoes. You know, the ones of my favorite shoes is the classic sneaker. Yeah. And you got a few pair. Yeah. Let's different. talk about your sneaker game real quick. So, um, ones are everything to me. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm on board with you about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, from lows to highs to retros, it doesn't matter. Yes. So I got, I think I got three right now, mm -hmm. including these. Mm -hmm. And then also shout out to Booth. Just simple. I love wearing Jordans, the ones, you know. Yeah, yeah. Anything new, any style, or any brand, really. Just like, um, can I ask what size those are? These are 14. Now, last time I checked, you were at 15 and 16, so these yeah. are not in your ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. Um, stay, stay tuned with those. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he uh, lended me a couple kicks. So I got. I lended got, you as he expects them back? Nah. <laughs> He, uh, he's like, I don't, go ahead. Okay. Like, yeah, he's uh, being a big bro. Basically. I was about to say, I was going to lend you sneaks. That's kind of harsh. Like, <laughs> is he going to pay for shipping and handling for him to get them back? <laughs> uh, so what are your least favorite sneaks? Uh, least favorite sneaks. Mm -hmm. I'd probably say. These are tough questions. Man. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably say like 
Tim's or something. I don't know. I, I don't like Tim's. Uh, all right. Well, sorry, New York. Um, <laughs> the shirt. <laughs> the shirt. Jermaine. Your name, mate. Yeah. J. Cole. Yeah. It's funny. I just realized that between you and Mr. Swider, we have a J. Cole on our team. <laughs> is that your favorite artist? Yes, that is my favorite artist by that far. Is? By far. Okay. Why? Uh, Why? 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 <laughs> He's just so lyrical, and then mm -hmm. uh, the punchlines. You can laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can laugh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, he just has like. <laughs> just basically the, the art of his his music from you know Friday Night Lights and on yeah. you know his progression and he he tells the truth in his music. All right, another dual sided question. What's your favorite project by him? I'm not even gonna say album because I I can say that truly yours is up there for me yeah. and truly yours too. But that wasn't an album. That was, wasn't even really a mixtape. Yeah. What's your favorite project, man? Uh, Born Center, by far. Why? Uh, Illuminati. Is she gonna pop? Uh. Just all of the, every track mm -hmm. on that album had some like urgency. Like he, yes. like he it's had subject some matter. fire. Yeah, it's like subject matter is like, me. Yeah, it, that that was what, what got it for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other side of it, what is your least favorite Cole album? Oh, project. Sorry. I would probably say for your for your eyes only. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, I, I feel like Four Hills. And then his previous mixtapes, even uh, K.O.D., I think is better than For Your Eyes. But what if the neighbors think you're selling dope? <laughs> Are you serious? I, it's just my opinion. I mean, it is what it is. It is, what it is. I, that's just me. You don't got to believe, like, you don't got to agree. Ho, 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 we got to talk about this. You would put For Your Eyes Only under his first album? On the sideline story? Ah, oh, sideline story. Ah. Uh, because I'm sorry, I feel like Cole one of the people that got better with time. Yeah. Like Jay-Z, it was like reasonable doubt. Boom. You know? <laughs> yeah. Drake, if you don't count so far gone, let's say you count his first album as what was that first one? Take care. Yeah, take He's care. He's here. I'm sorry to go back on this, but I can't not correct myself. That's the whole point of these cutaways. So if I mess up out there, I low key can like be in here and fix it. Drake's first album, album, like real album, was uh, Thank Me Later, not Take Care. So I'm sorry if I offended any of y'all like crazy Drake fans, but it was Thank Me Later, and it was a hit, I fault. Nas, Illmatic, yeah. Big, you know, like that. those albums right from Jump. Yeah. I felt like Cole got better with time. So you would put For Your Eyes Only under Sideline story? I uh, changed my mind now. You're right. Forgot about sideline story. Yeah, that was pressing 101. Y'all saw that? Yeah. Y'all saw it. I made him switch you got, up. You got, yeah. you got me there. You definitely I, got I me there. I ain't, I ain't, man. You folded. Now you see now. You up, you know that, don't you? I see what I'm saying. I, no, I. I you should have stuck, you should have stuck to I, your story. I forgot about that album, to be honest. You go, you go, you go, you go. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. Hey, but you expressed it, so we ain't really switching gears. You have a another side to you yeah. outside of the court. You have a lot of depth as a as a person. Um, you know, I've seen you interact with your teammates and the, and the things that you um, hold yourself accountable for, and mm -hmm. the things that you expect from them, and the things you're willing to do for them. You have a lot of depth to you as a person, and a lot of people don't know this, but you're a great drawer. You're you're great at yeah. art. Where does that come from, and how do you keep that stimulated with a full-time job like being a college athlete? Uh, I, first off, I get it from my dad. My dad used to do graffiti when he was a kid. Okay. And my dad, when I when I was little, would just draw my name out a little bit in like graffiti. Sorry, I'm counting in my head the statute of limitation. But go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> just giving up all the damn beans. But go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> he said he's a little kid. I was like, eh, seven years. Uh, uh. He called my lawyer. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Um, but, you know, anytime I can, I feel inspired. Like, it'll be like a certain picture of the way someone looks, like a facial expression. Yeah. Um, I'll just break out the pen and pad and I'll listen, listen to music and uh -huh. just go after and just lock into it. Okay. And do you think that's therapeutic as a student athlete to have something that you can 
I, I don't want to call it escape, but for me, it was the same type of thing. I was yeah. very into cinema in college and times where, you know, quite frankly, you have to take a mental break from your college sport um, just to get away from it. So when you come back to it, it's like a job. When you yeah. come back to it, you're that much more refreshed. Did you think that was therapeutic for you anyway? Yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. Especially when, you know, you're in the middle of the season, everything's yeah. being thrown at you. Yeah. And then you can actually just take a second and just uh -huh. focus on something different yeah. that involves many different, you know, um, uh, details and things like that of that uh -huh. nature. So, you know, uh, I'm lucky enough to have a, a little, a little yeah. gift like that. No, that's nice, man. That's nice. Like I said, I've always, cause it's just, it's interesting. Like when you, you know, you talk to athletes about those kind of hobbies, like drawing, you know, Amari with his poetry, it's yeah. just, you, you hear it's a, it's a therapeutic type of thing. What do you want to do with that? Honestly, I've always been big into, you know, like video games and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I would love one day, if maybe this basketball thing is done, mm -hmm. is to like draw for like a company or something like that, or help out and make characters like that. Uh -huh. That's the coolest thing ever to me. What kind of characters? Don't say like Fortnite. No, no, nah, nah, the Fortnite thing's done. Okay. The, the Fortnite thing's done. <laughs> thank, you. Yeah. thank you. We had a whole discussion about yeah, that last year, that, but thank that, you. That's done. Um, from superheroes to to like army guys to basketball players, athletes, it doesn't uh -huh. matter. Just anything that's action and you know and inspires you. Yeah, inspires me. Man, major man. All right, last <laughs> thing. We gotta get a handshake. We got ten seconds. So go ahead. What is it? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Wrap it in. <laughs> wrap, wrap around. And then, yeah. All right, let's try. I it. can't snap my right let's hand. Let's try. <laughs> it kind of works. We good. This is been Jermaine Sanders on Stay Tuned with you. We're going to work on that. Yeah, we uh, But thank you, man. Thank you for being on the show. Appreciate One of my favorite young guys on the team. Stay tuned with him this year. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, we got to keep going. Let's, let's try that again. So, it was boom, boom, boom. boom. Lock boom. here. Lock. Boom. Is it? What are you going for with that? Like, so you grab it and you're pulling in my hand like high. high okay. High All right. So, boom, boom. Yeah. Oh, we can do that too, uh, actually. Boom, bring it in. And mm -hmm. then you have the two hand thing. Uh, so. so boom, boom. Uh, uh, and then, oh, uh, all right, bet. Yeah, that was even better, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that was, was even better. <laughs> <laughs>